Thank you, Shilpa, once again. Why do we need contrast imaging in breast? A little bit on why we need a contrast imaging. We talked about contrast MRI, and then we are now on contrast mammography, and we'll see why we need contrast imaging at all. And we will see the technique of CEDM indications and the practical applications with case examples. And finally, I would conclude with the advantages and limitations of uh, contrast enhanced mammography. Uh, as we all know, breast cancer can present as a mass, whether it can be speculated or non-speculated. You can have calcification within the ducts. You can have non-calcified um, DCIS seen as soft tissue within the duct. You can see malignancy presenting as isolated architectural distortion or sometimes even as subtle asymmetries. But why cancers are missed? In case of a dense breast, as we all know in mammography, because of superimposition of tissue and a small cancer, when it does not produce any surrounding architectural distortion or if when they do not have a speculated margins and cancers can mimic just as a glandular tissue, for example, in case of a lobular carcinomas, non-calcified DCIS and sometimes because of the location. So what does a contrast imaging um, uh, do to pick up these difficult cancers are it totally takes out the background um, superimposed tissue and the cancer tissue stands out as an enhancing mass or an abnormality. So we have two contrast studies in breast imaging that's being widely used. One is a contrast enhanced MRI and the second is the contrast enhanced mammography. Let's see why breast cancers enhance because we know that the breast cancer um, develops neovascularities and because of the leaky capillaries, they enhance very fast in the first two minutes. And because of the leaky capillaries, the enhancement also washes out much earlier than a benign tissue. And uh, and the next thing that we have to look at it, do we really need a contrast study? We have digital mammography, we have tomosynthesis, we have an ultrasound, but do we really need a contrast imaging in breast? And this study really um, um, emphasize on the role of contrast imaging, though it says about the MRI versus the conventional mammography, the same thing applies for the contrast enhanced mammography as well. As you can see in the graph, the pickup or uh, the detection rate of the malignancies when aggressive are much more higher when we use a contrast imaging compared to the uh, mammogram and the interval cancers that's been picked up or detected is also much higher in the MR uh, or the higher grade spectrum. So the in case of a low grade DCIS mammogram, um, actually is very close to the MRI. But when you see the higher grade invasive cancers and you can see the difference between the mammogram and the MRI is very, very high. That is because MR or any contrast study picks up an aggressive malignancy. In a contrast enhanced mammography, we use two sets of uh, imaging. One is the low energy image and second is the high energy image. The soft tissue is better visualized at 30 kV x-ray, um, uh, which is the low energy and the iodine is best visualized at 50 kV x-rays. So when we do a low energy imaging, what we see is something very similar to a two-dimensional mammography. The high energy image is not readable and you see everything completely white. And what the system post processes and gives us is the recombined image um, where the background tissue is completely suppressed and only the enhancing masses are or the non-mass abnormalities are well visualized in the contrast enhanced mammography on recombined image. So what really happens is you can see an abnormality as a speculated mass or a non-speculated mass, a calcification or a non-calcified DCIS or an architectural distortion. On a contrast enhanced mammography, everything is seen and the recombined image basically suppresses the whole background parenchymal tissue and all the enhancing abnormalities, be it a non 
speculated mass or a speculated mass calcified non calcified dcis or an enhancing architectural distortion all stands out very well for us in a recombined image so if i have to ask you which side is the abnormality in this patient if i do not give a clinical history it is extremely difficult for us to guess uh, which side has got the pathology in this extremely dense mammogram but contrast makes our life much much simpler because the parenchyma the um, is completely suppressed and you can see an extensive multifocal multicentric malignancy here and enhancing abnormal load and you can see a non enhancing cyst also on the opposite breast so this is what in a simple words contrast enhanced mammography does to us so the, or what is the role of a radiologist in the evaluation of breast cancer one is to detect a non palpable abnormality or a non palpable early breast cancer through screening and when you have a palpable abnormality we do a diagnostic imaging to characterize this palpable abnormality and if a diagnosis of cancer is made imaging is done to stage do the perform the local staging for the breast cancer and for women who undergo post um, a new adjuvant chemotherapy imaging is performed form to us as response to the treatment and finally surveillance on an imaging of treated cancer so the role of cm is is very well in the in screening staging response assessment and sometimes in problem solving if you see the indications of mri and cem are they are pretty much the same because the principle of imaging is also the same which is the contrast enhancement so let's see first the role of cem in screening so this is a 46 year old lady very dense breast no complaints for screening on the um, on the right breast we what we observe is an area of isolated architectural distortion so the contrast shows an enhancing abnormality corresponding to the architectural distortion but there are also few more abnormal enhancement seen adjacent to the enhancing architectural distortion so the area of architectural distortion seen on the mammogram and the contrast enhanced mammogram if you compare this is much bigger we have an ultrasound correlate which is which also shows hard uh, peripheral stiff rim on elastography so this was biopsied and this was a uh, multi uh, multifocal lobular carcinoma so on a screening we detected an architectural distortion and contrast helped us that this architectural distortion is definitely abnormal by showing a wider area of enhancement and also picked up an additional foci which is very common that we see on an lobular carcinomas uh, so there were several studies the use of cm in screening though not widely though is not come into the gu guidelines there were several studies which had compared the role of cm with mri role of cm and a supplementary ultrasound where the performance of contrast enhanced mammography was definitely comparable the second component which i personally feel that cm has a definitely a potential role in developing countries like this is the role of cm in local staging so what is the role of imaging in local staging first and foremost is we need to identify whether the abnormality that we see or a palpable abnormality is a unifoc represent a unifocal cancer or a multifocal cancer if it's unifocal what is the actual extent of abnormality if at all the women is undergoing a breast conservation surgery and third is a nodal status and fourth is a contralateral screening so let's see examples of one after the other uh, this is a 41 year old lady pretty young lady who comes with a palpable uh, right breast lump so this is the correspo this corresponds to her palpable abnormality and it is it is really scary to see whether young lady dense breast she has got a cancer whether she is an isolated unifocal or whether she has got multifocal cancer so contrast makes it very very simple to us that we know that this is a unifocal invasive malignancy one and you know the define you, you will be able to define the extent that this is an isolated there is no non mass associated enhancement and most importantly in young women the contralateral breast is normal as well so this serves as a one stop solution for us in doing the local staging when provided we also do an ultrasound to stage the axilla
now sorry the age is not mentioned i guess she, she is also a, a, a pre menopausal uh, less than 50 year old lady with a left breast lump as you can see this mammogram clearly shows you the abnormality uh, seen in the upper inner quadrant of her left breast a uh, closer view shows there are calcifications coarse heterogeneous calcifications and few fine pleomorphic calcifications seen within the mass there is no other abnormality noted now look at the contrast enhanced mammogram so we see an in the mass which is also showing a heterogeneous enhancement on contrast plus you can see a non mass enhancement extending from this mass towards the nipple for a distance of more than 2 cm so if the lady had undergone a breast conservation surgery without a contrast imaging she would definitely have a positive margin in her lumpectomy specimen because she has quite a bit of non mass enhancement which is a non calcified dcis extending from the mass towards the nipple in segmental distribution so this is uh, here contrast mammography had helped us in defining the extent of the abnormality so, so that the surgeon can plan his surgical margins better so we avoid a resurgery which is very very important to us because most of our patients are paying from their own pocket and this actually avoids an unnecessary mastectomy and an additional resurgery and uh, this is the uh, mri which shows the similar finding that the surgeon had modified his margins and have included the non mass abnormality as well and the final pathology was an invasive carcinoma with a dcis Uh, moving on to the third example, a fifty-two-year-old lady with right breast lump, again a heterogeneously dense breast, but it's very clear to see this speculated mass seen in the upper outer quadrant of her right uh, breast, and um, a contrast was performed for her. Uh, as you can see, there is there are some calcifications which are also extending um, to her uh, anteriorly from this speculated mass on the spot views. Look at the contrast; you see. extensive additional focus you see multifocal multicentric cancer is almost occupying whole of her right breast plus we also could pick up an another enhancing focus uh, or enhancing mass in the left breast in the lower central uh, or lower inner quadrant of her left breast so we did a targeted ultrasound we could localize all these multifocal cancers on the right breast and also this was the left breast enhancing mass seen on the contrast enhanced mammography so uh, the mri also showed the same this was the enhancing mass which was seen on the contrast mammography and the final pathology was multifocal invasive ductal carcinoma with extensive dcis and the left breast was a complex sclerosing lesion uh when we look at the local staging no, when it comes to the nodal uh, staging cem is not the right modality as we all know mammogram is not the right modality but cem plus ultrasound is definitely comparable to ultrasound and a good axillary ultrasound can very well pick up all the lymph nodes from level 1 to 3 and intramammary and supraclavicular nodes also in selective cases so this was the study these are the studies which had said that um you know um there is a comparable uh, performance of an axillary ultrasound and the standard breast mri so cem though is not the modality of choice to do the axillary staging in the local staging uh, we never stop with the mammogram we do an ultrasound for these patients and a good axillary ultrasound can definitely stage the axilla so the third component of the role of cem is the response assessment this is a 51 year old lady with right breast lump as you can see she has got a speculated mass in her upper outer um, sorry outer central quadrant of her right breast plus on a closer look we also see a lot of micro calcifications extending along the biopsy was an invasive uh, carcinoma and she she was a her to enrich tumor as as also uh, pointers towards it which shows extensive micro calcifications this was the post chemotherapy uh, mammography which shows completely um uh, a re complete response 
the total the total disappearance of this speculated mass but we had calcifications to localize so this is the pre ajuvan neo uh, uh, pre neo ajuvan cm and the mri which shows comparable so these are the calcifications which show which is seen as non mass enhancement on the pre neo ajuvan cm and also on mri and this was the post neo ajuvan cm and mri which also is comparable saying that there is a complete response but there is one advantage here in in um, in the cm using cm for a new adjuvant chemotherapy response because these this patient had got microcalcifications extending posterior to the mass and also anterior to the mass and we used this as a marker to localize the lesion so we did not clip the uh, uh, clip this lesion uh this mass because we know though she is undergoing a new uh, uh, breast conservation surgery following a new adjuvant chemotherapy we know that the calcifications persist and hence we did a bracketing technique and there were foci of dcis with no residual invasive carcinoma and the resected margins were free of tumor and this was the specimen with bracketing so look at this case this was a 45 year old lady with right breast lump she was a uh, triple negative with an axillary node uh, uh, metastasis and hence she underwent a new adjuvant chemotherapy and this was the contrast um, enhanced mammography which shows one additional focus which is enhancing which is also seen on ultrasound and mri and this is the pre neo adjuvant and this was the enhancing node so we clipped both the lesion and the lymph node and this was the post neo adjuvant chemotherapy which still shows some persistent mass and the clip is seen here and here as well and what is very interesting to see is on an ultrasound we see a soft tissue mass with a clip inside but if you see the enhancing component is restricted to the posterior aspect of the mass and not in the clip the clip was positioned in the center of the mass and the anterior aspect of the mass was not enhancing at all and the same finding was seen on mr as well so the prediction of the active or the residual disease was comparable to mri and was also seen on histopathology histopathology confirmed so this was the no, a mass which was clipped you can see that the mass is, the clip was placed in the center of the mass and this was the uh, node positive um no, node which was also clipped and we put in a wire in the axillary lymph node and targeted axillary dissection with sentinel node dissection and the excision lumpectomy was done and the pathology also confirmed that the residual mass was seen in the it was seen posterior to the clip um there were several studies systematic reviews which also compares there you cannot um uh, we don't have a standardization for uh, you you can't compare the performance of cem with a digital mammography what what we can compare is a cem can be compared with mri because the technique is the same both uses contrast and in in many papers and systematic reviews this was definitely comparable the last part is uh, though it is not clearly defined as one of the indications in our day to day cl clinical practice we had used cem as a problem solving tool as well this was a 42 year old lady with pain in the right breast and she also had a lump in the bre uh, left breast which she says that she is not bothered she has been having it for 2 or 3 years what she had in the right breast was a periodontal mastitis and what she had in the left breast though it looked like a circumscribed mass it was quite big palpable and she was 42 so we decided to biopsy but the, there was absolutely no enhancement of this mass and this was a solid mass as well so this is a solid mass with no enhancement and the mr was performed purely for academic reasons to compare and the final biopsy was pseudo angiomatous stromal hyperplasia or the pash so this was big mass no enhancement we know that this will cannot represent an invasive cancer the last uh, component uh, last case example is a 65 year old lady with back pain she uh, who had vertebral metastasis and pet ct was done to localize her primary as you can see that axillary nodes supraclavicular nodes on the right side is lighting up she has got a liver lesion she has got a vertebral met uh, she has got a rib metastasis uh, all lighting up on pet and so she was referred to us for the mammogram and you can see there were large lymph nodes with perinodal extension and hence she had a trabecular thickening and a uh, uh, peri areolar skin thickening all secondary to this nodal mass and this was a scattered 
breast we did not see any suspicious microcalcifications or mass we gave contrast and you can see that that is definitely multiple small irregular uh, mass masses with indistinct margins which were not seen on the um, you, as you can see there is no in corresponding enhancement seen on the opposite side and we did a targeted ultrasound we could localize such smaller lesions and this is actually a node with perinodal extension and this mass was definitely showing very hard on elastography and we biopsied this and this was proven to be an invasive carcinoma with a metastatic right axillary lymph node with extensive perinodal uh, extension and that explains her extensive metastasis as well. So um, though it looks so exciting when I uh, had shown you a lot of examples, this modality is not without any limitation. As we use the same mammographic technique, the location of the lesion cannot be um, uh, cannot be well brought out just because we are doing a contrast mammography. This was a 59-year-old lady with a left breast lump. As you can see, how much ever our, our technologists try to do an excellent positioning, it is impossible to visualize because of the location of the mass in the left breast. So she even tried a cleavage view. Uh, the contrast. So nothing was uh, helpful for us because of the location of the lesion. The pathology was inf uh, infiltrating ductal carcinoma and she was ERPR positive luminal B. And here we definitely need MR. Uh, MR cannot be avoided because MR because it is not limited by the location of this lesion, we will be very sure to say whether the chest wall involvement is seen, whether it is just infiltrating the pectoralis major or it is just sitting on the pectoralis major without an obvious infiltration. So this uh, positioning limitation cannot be overcome just because we are giving a contrast on a mammography. And uh, the most important question that we get in our mind is how much more is the radiation when we use a uh, CEDM. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is the article which talks about uh, so, yeah, which talks about the average glandular dose when we use CEGM, when we do the, use a digital mammography and uh, the uh, the tomosynthesis. And it is found that it is in, there is definitely an increase in the radiation dose uh, compared to the digital mammography and the tomosynthesis. However, it is when you combine 2D plus 3D, if you use only CEDM and use the low energy X-rays as 2D, it is definitely less. And even if you do a C CEDM, the average glandular dose falls below the limit of 3 milligrams set by the mammography quality standard at regulation. And hence, we should not think too much about the radiation. It is definitely within the acceptable limits, provided you use them wisely. So the, the last part of the talk is what is the advantage? We talked about the limitation. We talked about the radiation that's involved and how far, how better or how it is not better compared to the MRI. When we have, when we look at the MRI, the most important advantage that we have is no radiation. Contrast reactions are less life-threatening. It is not limited by the positioning. But the, we ha also have to remember that it is a totally different study. It is time consuming. You cannot use it for claustrophobic patients. It is not widely available. It is definitely expensive. And theoretically, it has much more po false positive rates compared to the contrast enhanced mammography. Whereas contrast enhanced mammography, though it has got an ionizing radiation, we use an ironated contrast. It is not possible to completely evaluate when the mass is seen in the difficult location. It definitely has significant advantage in uh, and we can be using it for a vast group of patients because it is simple, it's quick, relatively cheap, same equipment as a mammogram and it can be completed as one study. You don't have to schedule the patient for contrast study after the biopsy reports for MRI and theoretically it is said that it gives less pos false positive and when everything is done in one go, it is definitely more comfortable to the patient and also for us. Uh, so to conclude, contrast enhanced mammography definitely has a role in local state with a diagnostic accuracy comparable to MRI in most of our clinical situations because it is cost-effective and acts as a one-stop solution.